Christ was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Amen. God's word for our meditation this morning is found in our epistle lesson from Philippians chapter 3 and 4. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, how important to you is your citizenship? Have you ever thought about that? How important it is it to you to be a citizen of this blessed country in which we live? We really don't think about that, do we? Probably take it for granted. Don't really think about it until maybe if you've had an opportunity to, to travel out of the country. If you travel overseas, it's a comfort to know what your citizenship is, that you're a citizen of the United States, and if there's any trouble, you can rely on the, the help of the government and even go to the nearest American embassy. You might not think about your American citizenship until, like, maybe if you're traveling, like, into Canada or Mexico and you're coming back over the border and you need to have that passport to get back into the country. Your citizenship is something that's important to you at that time. But many times we just take it for granted. We don't think about it. A few years ago, it wasn't my American citizenship that I was thinking about. After I had accepted the call to serve Zion here in Cologne, one of the first things on my mind was to get my residency and citizenship established in South Dakota as quickly as possible. Probably not the best reasons behind it. I knew that I had to be a citizen for six months before I could get my fishing license at a discounted rate, my hunting license at a discounted rate, my deer tag at a discounted rate. So when I came to move some things out of here ahead of time, as soon as we got the truck unloaded, I went over to the courthouse in winter and got my driver's license and everything established so I could do that and be legal. My citizenship was important for me because of all of those outdoor activities. I can tell you that I wasn't really happy when I was put on jury duty for six months because of that South Dakota citizenship. But still, it was an opportunity, a blessed opportunity to serve, and that's one of the things with citizenship as well. The Apostle Paul, as he talks to us in God's Word this morning, speaks some familiar words, some beautiful words that are important for us. They're words that actually, is, again, as I look at the text, they just jump out. And he says, our citizenship is in heaven. Have you ever thought about that, really? You know, we, we sang about that in the hymn, in the sermon hymn, heaven is my home. Paul tells us our citizenship is in heaven. And you might be thinking to yourself, Pastor, how can my citizenship be in heaven? I haven't been there yet. But Paul says, this is our citizenship already. Even though we aren't in heaven yet, even though it's something that waits for us in the future, it is a certainty, our citizenship is in heaven. And this is something that God wants us to remember because of where we live right now. We have a tendency to get caught up in this world and in the ways of this world and in the ways that this world thinks, and we forget where our citizenship really is. We start to think, I'm a citizen of this world. I'm a citizen of this creation. But we were not meant to stay here. Scripture reminds us, too, that we're just sojourners. We're just journeyers. We're just visitors here. But our home is in heaven. And the Lord wants us to live that way, to be mindful of that, because the devil, the world, and our sinful nature want us to forget that. What a beautiful possession. What a beautiful title we have as citizens of heaven. How did we get to be citizens of heaven? <coughs> we got to be citizens of heaven the same way that we became God's children. We became a child of God that moment that faith was planted in our heart. Whether it was through 
hearing the word of God spoken to us, or whether it was the word of God that came to us through our baptisms as we were brought here to the font, and God worked that faith, that forgiveness of sins in us, and put his name upon us, making us members of his family. That's how we became citizens of heaven. And God continues to keep us citizens of heaven every time we come in contact with his word and sacrament. That, that word and sacrament which brings to us, which hold out before us so vividly that forgiveness of sins, the forgiveness for all our sins, that's centered on Christ Jesus, our Savior. It's Jesus. No wonder, again, the Apostle Paul says in our text, he says, Brothers, join in imitating me, and keep your eyes on those who walk according to the example you have in us. For many of whom I have often told you and now tell you, even with tears, walk as enemies of the cross of Christ. We live in a sinful world. It's not only the sins of others that we worry about, but it's also our own sinful nature which the devil uses to try to rip us away from God. We, as citizens of heaven, we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Without Christ, there is no citizenship in heaven. That's why Jesus said too, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. That's why Jesus said in John chapter 12, he said, In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. But I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be where I am. The place is in heaven. That place is where our citizenship is. And this is something that Paul says we're to keep mindful of. Why? Because we live in a world where there are many enemies of the cross of Christ. Many people the, the entities that call themselves Christian, call themselves citizens of heaven, call themselves emissaries of our Savior, but they're enemies of the cross of Christ. And this is something that's important for us to keep in mind, because we all have a tendency to think this way. To think in this particular way, that if it comes in the name of religion, if it comes with a cross neatly packaged to it, if it comes with the title of Christian, it has to be good. Or if it's a messenger of God and, and the title reverend comes before it, it has to be good and benevolent. Paul says many come as enemies of the cross of Christ. And those enemies come in many different wave, uh, uh, forms and shapes and packages. Many are enemies of the cross of Christ. Enemies the, in the same way at the time of the Apostle Paul as they are today. Where, the, where they say, you know what? You get to heaven by what you do. Lead a good life. Strive to do your best. Be good to others. And it doesn't even remember, matter if you believe that Jesus is your Savior. That can be okay. But as long as you're good and you're sincere, that's the path to heaven. Paul tells us that's an enemy of the cross of Christ. As he describes them, he says, he says their enemy or their end is destruction. Their God is their belly. They glory in their shame with their minds set on earthly things. The mind set on earthly thing with the way that, that, that the devil has gotten a simple nature to think for forever, since the beginning of time, I can work my way to heaven. And then Paul talks about the other ones, the other side, where he says, their God is their belly. They glory in their shame. The other extreme of the enemies of the cross of Christ. Enemies within the church that attack the message of the cross. The ones who say, God is love. He forgives. And there's nothing wrong with that message, but then they go on and say, go ahead and do whatever you want. 
There's no such thing as sin. And if you really want to be a, a, an exemplary Christian, indulge yourself. And the more you indulge yourself, the better. Feed your desires. Don't deprive yourself of anything. <coughs> you ever wondered to yourself, how did we, how have we gotten into the church where things that years ago were told, we were told and we learned and we believed were considered to be sin and considered to be reprehensible? And now the church today, the church at large says that these things are okay, they're good and they're right and they're the way that God created things to be. This is a hallmark of an enemy of the cross of Christ whose glory is in their shame. An enemy. That's why Paul gives us the encouragement not only to remember that our citizenship is in heaven, but listen when he says, Brothers, join in imitating me and keep your eyes on those who walk according to the example you have in us. Paul here holds himself up as an example. And you know what? Paul was not perfect. You remember Paul's history. He had started out as an enemy of the cross of Christ. He was arch enemy number one of the Christian church who went out and murdered and arrested Christians thinking he was doing the work of God. But Jesus appeared to him on the road to Damascus, turned him around, made him a citizen of heaven, and sent him out as an apostle to the Gentiles as a missionary. Paul's life was turned around in a completely different direction. Paul now was centered on Christ and on the cross and on salvation by grace through faith alone for the forgiveness of sins. And Paul says, Jesus is the example. But he says, don't forget that the examples that Jesus has given us. Paul, a man whose love and devotion and zeal for the Lord is spreading the gospel and, and holding up Jesus high for all to see. All the people that the Lord used Paul bring to faith. Can you think of examples that you have had in your life? Examples that brought you and held you close to the cross of Christ? Whether it was a pastor, a Sunday school teacher, a mom, a dad, a grandmother, a grandfather, <coughs> Those people whose example of faith, their trust in the Lord Jesus for forgiveness and eternal life, that that's what motivated and moved them to live for the Lord and to share Him. That's why Paul says, be imitators together with Him. Don't forget. Think of those examples. Be heartened in them and remember how those examples became to be examples. It was because of Jesus. I remember hearing a story a few years back about a man in prison who was called the Iron Man. Not the, not the, not the character from the movies and the Marvel comic book series. But this was a man who had been convicted for violent crimes, murder and, and theft and robbery and embezzlement and all sorts of things. And while he was in prison, he was put in solitary confinement, and his warden had very little time for him. And as this man said in his cell, he had a conversation with the man in the cell next to him, who happened to be a Christian. This man shared with him Jesus and what he had done for him. And this man wanted to learn more, and the, and the Iron Man wanted to learn more. And anyway, he wanted... To, this man, this up man who was sharing Jesus with him in the other cell said, I have a Bible. And he said, well, can I see it? Well, the warden wouldn't let the Iron Man have a Bible or any books in his cell. So they came up with this, the man in the other cell came up with this idea. Tell the warden you need toilet paper. Why? Just do it. So he told the warden, I need toilet paper. He was standing there at the door. 
And the warden didn't even want to give him that. He says, you're not worth the expense. And then the man in the other cell said, I've got some pages from my book here. He ripped out ten pages from the Gospel of Luke. And the warden said, here, use this. And the Iron Man read those pages from the Gospel of Luke. And as time went on, that Bible was shared. And the Iron Man came to faith. And it turned out to be, after he got released from prison, a man who told and talked about Jesus and shared Jesus with troubled youth, with people who were arrested. He went to jails and to prisons and shared Jesus. All because of the example of one Christian who shared the faith with him. All of us here this morning, I think we can trace it back to somewhere, to some person, maybe not just one, maybe a few, because of their examples of faith, because of what the Lord had done for their lives, they brought the Lord to us too. And they still serve as examples today. The blessing that is, those blessings the Lord gives us. <coughs> and he tells us through the word, through our Savior, through those, exam through those examples, live as citizens of heaven. Because that is what you and I are. That citizenship the devil never wants us to be certain of. He never wants us to cherish. But that's what the Lord encourages us with. As we live in this world which is hostile to our faith, which is hostile to the Lord, which is hostile to Christians. And once again, Jesus says, never forget who you are. A citizen of heaven through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs>
Please stand for our prayer. Join me in praying the response of prayer for church that you can find on the white insert in your bulletin. The one that says Second Sunday in Lent at the top. <coughs> Lord Jesus Christ, spurned and rejected like the prophets before you.